Hello everyone, welcome to session 16 of LTech 623. This short video is designed to wrap up the course and send everyone off in style. We'll do that by briefly recapping what we've covered this semester, revisiting the course learning objectives, and sharing a few ideas for possible next steps. So let's get started. So what have we accomplished this semester? Well, we started out by getting to know each other and reflecting on the role video has played in our own personal educations. Once we got up and rolling, we learned that video has a number of advantages that make it an effective medium for sharing information and ideas. We also acknowledge that while powerful, video is not a silver bullet when it comes to teaching and learning. As we prepared to create our own videos, we learned about the independent dimensions of video, production style, visual aesthetics, and production value. We also added a pedagogical layer to these dimensions, emphasizing how various choices within each of these dimensions combine and interact to influence the effectiveness of educational video. From there, we focused in on some of the technical aspects of video production, such as lighting, sound, camera shots, camera movements, and camera angles. Ultimately, we embarked on a four-week production process that moved us from pre-production to production to post-production and finally to reflection, where we viewed and critiqued our own original video productions. We went through this process three times, creating a chalk and talk video, a talking head video, and soon enough, a conversation video. And along the way, we learned about some new tools for working with video and audio, such as WeVideo, Audacity, and Go React. In the final weeks of the semester, we zoomed out to examine several research studies investigating what does and does not matter when it comes to designing effective instructional videos. And of course, we ended by looking at examples of creative ways video is and has been used to support education. And that, my friends, is the semester in a nutshell. So what about our learning objectives? Let's take a minute to review those objectives so we can contemplate how well we did in terms of meeting them. Our first learning objective was to understand, analyze, and evaluate how people learn with, from, and through video. Our second learning objective was to analyze, evaluate, and apply the dimensions of educational video, including production style, visual aesthetics, and production value. And our third objective was to create original digital videos for instructional purposes by applying an intentional design process. Looking back, I hope you feel the course content and activities aligned with and helped us meet these objectives. And importantly, that we were able to move up and down and embrace nearly every level of Bloom's taxonomy. To end, I want to share a few ideas about where you might go from here. First, I want to encourage you to keep reading about research on video and education. In all likelihood, as video becomes more and more a part of society in and out of education, the amount of research related to educational video will only increase. So if you're interested, I encourage you to keep an eye on what's happening in this space to better understand the kinds of questions the field is facing and addressing. Here's a list of popular educational technology journals based on Google Scholar citations. These journals are good places to start in terms of monitoring research on video and teaching and learning. I've highlighted a few of these that I think are particularly well regarded. Second, I want you to consider learning more about digital storytelling. This is something we didn't really have time to get into this semester, but I think it's relevant and important. In education, a lot has been written about the power of using media education to help people of all ages and backgrounds develop their critical thinking, communication, and literacy skills through digital storytelling. For example, you might want to check out this book by Stephen Goodman, the executive director of the Educational Video Center. This is an inspiring read about the transformative power of helping everyday people become content creators. 
Third, consider taking other video-related courses within the UH system. UH is huge, and one of the benefits at studying at a major public university is the buffet of course offerings. Take advantage. In terms of video, there's relevant courses in communication, the Academy for Creative Media, Information in Computer Science, and Educational Psychology. The courses listed here are more or less directly related to video, but all of them will almost certainly strengthen your understanding and ability to leverage and study educational video. Fourth, keep growing your affinity spaces by leveraging resources and communities interested in video creation. Groups like YouTube's Creator Studio, for example, have tons of learning resources and classes available for free, so be sure to check those out. Finally, keep an eye on developments in video technology. This is an area that is advancing quickly and there are some exciting new technologies on the horizon. One example is 360 degree video, which raises some interesting questions about the potential applications of video for teaching and learning. Of course, each of these new developments will need to be researched in terms of how it enhances or hinders learning. So with each new development, comes lots of potential research topics. So there you have it, five different ways you might think about continuing your journey with educational video. All right, everyone, we're out of time for the semester. Thank you for your hard work and enthusiasm. I enjoyed working with all of you as we explored the fascinating and interdisciplinary area of digital video design. Mahalo, everyone, and have a great summer.